Why was the early Earth so hot? Because that's the main thing, it was really, really hot. Now you've already got some clues as to why it was so hot. And you might be able to think this through. But let me give you three of the main reasons. First, do you remember that supernova that blew up just before the solar system was formed? That created huge amounts of radioactive material. And that radioactivity generated a lot of heat. Today, a lot of it's dissipated. So today's Earth is nothing like as radioactive as it was four and a half billion years ago. Secondly, you remember the process of accretion, really violent, lots of space debris crashing into other space debris. Each collision with a meteorite or an asteroid created huge amounts of heat. And the third problem, the third problem is subtler because it's pressure. You remember those clouds that the early stars formed from? Well, as the clouds got denser, you remember, the pressure increased and they got hotter. And the same thing happens with the early Earth. As it accreted, it got larger, pressure built up, and heat built up, particularly at the center. So that's why the early Earth was so hot. In fact, the early Earth got so hot, it melted. And that is really important, because if it hadn't melted, today's Earth would be very different from the way it was. To get a sense of what happened and why this was so important, let, let, let's imagine a kind of absurd experiment. Okay, so you're going to put some stuff into, in a saucepan. You're going to put in some coins. You're going to put in some rice. You're going to put in some plastic. Let's add a bit of mud. Let's put in some ice. And then you can chuck in one or two other things. And now we're going to heat that stuff up to several thousand degrees. Don't stir. Just let it simmer. Now, it's, going to, it's not going to taste good, but we may be able to learn something from this. And what we'll see is that the whole thing's going to melt. The heavy stuff, such as the coins, are going to sink down to the bottom. Lighter stuff is going to rise to the top. And some stuff is going to evaporate and boil above the saucepan. Now, something very like this seems to have happened to the early Earth. It melted. And because it melted, it formed a series of layers. And they give it its structure today. Let's look at the four main layers. Now, the first is at the center. It's the core. It's metallic. Nickel and iron, above all iron, sank to the center of the Earth. And the fact that the center of the Earth is full of metal is really important because this gave the Earth its magnetic field. And the magnetic field deflects some of the sun's rays that would be harmful to living creatures such as us. So that's the first layer, the core. Secondly, Lighter stuff, lighter rocks, float above the core and form a layer that's called the mantle. Now, the mantle you can think of as a sort of hot sludge of rocks. These rocks are so hot, they're sort of semi-molten, and they're actually moving around in convection currents inside the mantle. And then at the very top, you have a layer called the crust. L very light rocks, such as basalts and granites, reach the top, they cool, they form this thin layer, the crust, that's where we live. But the crust is pushed around by those convection currents from underneath. You can think of the crust as a tiny, thin layer, a bit like a sort of eggshell. And finally, the fourth layer, the atmosphere. Some of the gassy stuff bubbles up to the top. It evaporates. The very light gases, such as hydrogen, disperse into space. But a lot of other gases just hang around the Earth, held by its gravitational pull. And that's how the Earth acquired the structure it has today. All of this happened about 10 million years after the creation of our solar system.